Welcome back to the Western Home Stadium. It will feel different, but the main priority is to keep the players, management, officials and you, our supporters, safe. Prior to the match, you will be asked to agree with certain COVID-19 terms and conditions. When here, we ask that everyone, regardless of your internal, external, inside, outside, it is essential that you wear your face covering to prevent the spread of COVID. You should not attend the Western Home Stadium if you have symptoms, been in contact with anyone who has symptoms, or tested positive yourself recently, or been advised to isolate as per the test and trace NHS system. The Posh Club shop and ticket office will be open on match days. Please follow social distancing rules and any traffic light system in place. We have made some changes to the way you enter the stadium. Please avoid putting your hands on the turnstiles when you enter. Once through the turnstiles, please make use of the hand sanitizer available. Please be aware that all transactions within the stadium and the surrounding areas will be cashless. The kiosks inside the ground, unfortunately, will be closed, but it will continue to be reviewed. The toilets will have attendants outside to remind you to socially distance within the facilities and to enforce one-way systems where possible. Our ticketing team have worked extremely hard using the latest government guidance in terms of social distancing and seating plans. You must sit in your allocated seat and remain seated throughout your duration. We ask that you please be respectful of other supporters when leaving your seat before, during and after the game and keep your movement to a minimum. Supporters on the move should turn their backs as they pass others and avoid face-to-face -face contact with other supporters. If the match ball does go into the crowd, do not return it to the field of play. Please pass it to a ball sanitizer who will be present. We understand you've not been at the Western Home Stadium for some time. However, it's vitally important you do not gather or mill around in concourse areas. Be warned, after the final whistle, there will be a staggered exit plan. You must follow the instructions from the stewarding team, either in person or via the PA system. You should only come to the match with people from the same household or support bubble. It is important that you do not transfer tickets to others or sell your ticket ahead of the match. If, for whatever reason, you cannot attend the match and have purchased a ticket, please let our ticket office know in advance. You can see their contact details and information on the screen now. We hope you enjoy being back at the Western Home Stadium and thank you for following the guidance. Hello and welcome to the Western Home Stadium and today's pre-match show in association with Mick George. You'd have just seen our Head of Strategic Risk and Security, Cy Roberts, talking through what supporters will expect here at the stadium today with up to 2,000 set to enjoy their first game. Of course on Tuesday night we faced West Ham United in the Papa John's Trophy and a selection of supporters were here enjoying their first experience of being back watching live football. So what can you expect in today's show? Well we catch up with manager Darren Ferguson live where he delivers his team news especially for you the viewer we catch up with him via his pre-match press conference earlier on this week where he talked about today's opponents Rochdale we also catch up with Idris Kanu. Kanu was arguably man of the match in that victory over West Ham United and we speak to him in two parts throughout this show where he talks about playing as a wing back his number 10 role playing as a striker and of course bouncing back from a serious injury last season which could have curtailed his career we also delve into the archives to bring you former matches against Rochdale from the late 1990s and we've got much, much more to look forward to throughout this show. So let's get cracking. I got for Rochdale at home in the league yeah. on Saturday. Uh, looking forward to this one after the performance you saw on Tuesday? Yeah, very much so. I mean, firstly, the performance on Tuesday gave everyone a lift. Played really well. Real energy in the team. Three goals, clean sheet. Um, I was delighted with them and really... For me, that's us moving forward. That with the template of how I want to play, breaking the lines, playing with a real quality on the ball, uh, some very good individual performances and a good team performance. And uh, please, for like Mo got a couple of goals, Sahak got his first. So it's you know it's come at the right time for us, and um, hopefully 
we can build on that. A lot of people will say what well, was West Ham youngsters, but I was only I only look at our performance, and our performance was very good. Yeah, just speaking to Idris Khan, who relished that role in that second half, and he did what you wanted him to do, which is deliver good balls into the box. He said last week they've been working on it, and it came to fruition with some of the balls he put in. Yeah, he's got good running power, and in the second half he penetrated by his runs in behind. We found him. We got crosses into the box. Look, if we're going to play certain ways with wingers, wing backs, whatever it is. We have to get more crosses into the box, pure and simple. Mm. And we have to find a way of doing that. That necessarily is not the, the, the players that are putting the ball in the box. It means that the speed of play has got to be quicker to allow them 1v1 situations. And I felt we did that well. H on the other side is slightly different to Idris. He's more of a technical player in terms of he passes and follows. He made one, Idris made one. Good job by those two. Mo got a couple of goals. Uh, but overall, some very good performances. I mean, Ronnie Edwards at the back was, when you watch it back, he was an absolutely outstanding performance he gave. And Ethan Hamilton showed so much to his game that you, he can bring to a starting lineup. The, the running power, like you mentioned, with with Eddie, he can he can change the dynamic of a game if the, the right service comes into him. Yeah, Ethan played very well, and uh, we know he's got that in the locker. He needs to do that on a more consistent basis. I think he just needs a bit more self-belief, the boy. I think he needs to bring that sort of performance when he's in the like with the more senior players, if you want. But he's it's in there, and uh, I thought he played well in the game against Cambridge. It wasn't a good performance team-wise, but he was fine. So yeah, he gave a strong performance. I think Fraser did well as well. And after Saturday, the game at Portsmouth, where obviously as a team performance, they were the only two that started. I think it was important for them after that game to get good performances and. I think it's important for everyone that, you know, especially with the fans back, give us a bit of energy. Yeah. We'll have more fans on Saturday. So, yeah, listen, we, our level of performances, if, they, if they're at that level, regardless of game, selection, team, we're, we're a tough team to play against. Do you see Fraser more now as a left-sided centre-half than a left-back? I know he arrived and played left-back. He can play there, he can play left-wing. But obviously, he, he, he's naturally suited to that sort of left-sided centre-half role because of his size, maybe? Yeah, I think so. There's others that can play there. And there's one or two things we haven't tried yet that I'm, I'm looking at in terms of how we, we can get balance to it. So, no, I think there's, Fraser's very good in that position, you know, and um, he showed again. He, he played there against Plymouth and he, he did well. Uh, and he can play, I think, different positions, but, you know, I think on, on Tuesday he was good because he gave you balance and he gave you a bit of quality as well on the ball. And just finally, obviously, the FL Trophy draw, the Papa John Trophy draw, home tie, which is what you wanted, um, and, and Portsmouth, who obviously have done well in this competition, so one to relish. Great draw, we're at home, that's all I wanted, a home tie, and whoever we play at home, we have to think that uh, we're very strong, and we go into it thinking we're going to win the game. No disrespect to anyone who we play, but we're confident when we play at home, and certainly it's 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 a good draw because it's at home and look the way that the, the 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 draw was going to be it was always going to be you would have thought a tough game and but you've got to beat them you know we want to go far in the tournament we want to try and win it if we can portsmouth are one of the teams that like ourselves pretty much have the same mentality in this tournament in terms of they they go quite strong but we've got quite a lot of league games up to them but at least we know we've got another home match and uh yeah, it's important that we got that. I was pleased with the draw. Any team that can beat Plymouth 4 0 away from home is a good team. And Watch Tell have done that. Look, they've got real, real belief and real chemistry in how they play. Um, in terms of their movements, their rotations, their ball retention, there's certain things you need to do very, very well against them. You definitely need to play as a team. You can't play as individuals, and especially off the ball. So, yeah, they're good on in possession. Um, but there's obviously, we really need to focus on our own performance. We will go through Rochdale as we do in every other opposition. But really the, the main focus, as it, as it is all the time really, is on us. But in particular for these, this game coming up and games moving forward, we need to get our performance level to a standard that can start getting us winning games again. And that's my main focus for this game. In terms of the injuries, nothing changed in terms of the bulletin in last game with regards to people coming Do you back? know what, injury-wise, touch wood, We've got one or two close. Ricky's really close. Butler's really close. Ricky's ahead of schedule. If he's not involved, he won't be involved this weekend, but he's got a right chance. He, I think he'll be involved against Ipswich, and Butler's got a chance to be involved on Tuesday. Um, Joe Ward's coming along well. Um, we need them back. There's no doubt about that. Uh, otherwise, 
Bobby Compton's obviously we've got an issue with him in terms of he's picked up a, a slight head injury again, so we have to look after him. So he'll be missing for a period of time, but we've got a plan in place for him. Um, I'm just trying to think who else it was. I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is, yeah. I think that's it. Obviously, um, El Presidente, Darren McCann, moved back in the building. He was uh, at the game on Tuesday and obviously seemed to enjoy himself just behind the dugout there. And, and, and good to have him back in, in, because of the long period he's going to be here. Yes, I'm, I always prefer when he's in the country and we have good meetings and good dialogue. We do anyway, obviously, and we speak quite very regularly. Um, we had a good chat before the game on Tuesday. Obviously, we've got certain things that we need to discuss and, and, and deal with. Uh, I still call him the chairman. I, I don't call him El Presidente. Uh, but uh, Did you not insist upon it, no? No, I, the chairman to me. And uh, so I, I'm glad he's over, and then we can discuss things. And listen, he's, he Tuesday was pleased, obviously, with with in particular the second half performance. I, listen, he's 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 like the rest of us. He, he wants to see us winning games. He wants to see us scoring goals. We've got a philosophy at this club that certainly when I'm manager that we want to attack and score goals. Um, and there's certain things we need to do better, you know, and certain clear stats that we need to get better to do that. And 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 that's what we're working on. And, and hopefully we improve on that. And when we do, I think we'll start winning games again. And just finally, it should be 2,000 fans. I think there's 1,400 yeah. so far as we tell this at the time we are speaking. Um, obviously that'll be filled up tomorrow. Um, that will be good because obviously there was less than a thousand now on Tuesday, but the atmosphere they generated was really noticeable. Players have been saying it, so to have a, an extra thousand on top of that should create a good atmosphere. I think it will. I think it's, it's, it's strange how it's worked out that sometimes less is more in, in the sense that because there's only 2,000 and there was only 1,000 on Tuesday, they all feel like they need to make a noise and so it mm. creates a good atmosphere. There was a re it, done, it did make a big difference. I mean, Tuesday night was pouring down and mm. that's why I was pleased we got a performance and a win for them. So yeah, we, we do feel it's going to give us that energy in two ways you look at it. One, if you're on top and doing well, they'll give you the encouragement in terms of they'll be there. What we need off the fans is you know, in particular at the moment, we're having a bit of a, a, a bad run in terms of results, obviously. We really need them to, to, to drive us on and give us that energy, whether we're, we're, we're not doing things that we want to do or they want to see, we need them to drive us on as opposed to getting frustrated. So I think they're really going to help, yeah, definitely. We've got the team lineup for today. Um, it's hard to guess this one, to be honest. <laughs> okay, um, Pimmy and Goal, and then uh, back three of Frankie, Tomo and Beeves. Iddy and H as wing backs. Browning and Tails, Flynn as a 10, and then two strikers, John and Dems. Uh, is that a hard decision for you to make, or based on Tuesday night, an easy one given the performances? Well, no, they're, all, they're never easy because you, I've got a good squad. Uh, I just felt uh, one or two need to come out, have a look at things. Sometimes it's, it's good for them to just come out and and have a bit of a breather really mentally because you know it's it's not been a great run and, and that's why we've got a squad in terms of picking different players to play in different games. Tuesday night was, was a very good performance and I had to take that into consideration. We're at home, we've got two natural wing backs in, in Eddie and H. Um, Brownie in for Reedy, I mean it's just I've got four very good central midfield players. Uh, and that, uh, even even the bench, there's one or two that have been involved have, and not even in that because I just want to freshen the whole thing up and I think others deserve to come into the squad. Not saying that the ones that are out of it have done anything really wrong, it's just that I wanted to freshen it up. We've got, I think including today, nine games and something like 30 odd days, so I'm going to need everyone. So I think it brings a bit of energy to the team um, and I'm looking forward to it, you know, I'm looking forward to the game. I'm, it's great the fans are back, it should give us that extra energy, it certainly did on Tuesday night. And if we get a similar performance to that in terms of creating chances, uh, being on the front foot, then you know I'm hopeful that that'll get a result.
Now, earlier this week, I sat down with Idris Kano. Now, believe it or not, Idris is actually the longest serving player at Peterborough United, having joined as a striker. But during the week against West Ham United, he excelled in a wing back role. We catch up with Idris to talk about that position and much more in part one of our interview. Well, Eddie, let's first and foremost talk about Tuesday night and the, the Papa John's Trophy win, 3-0 uh, victory over West Ham. Under-21s obviously played a significant role in that game. You seem to really enjoy yourself, particularly second half. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. I feel like we played good football. It was getting it going. Everyone was moving for each other and like, everyone was just trying to help each other out. Mm. And when that happens, that the rest talks for itself and we did really well. Yeah, and ultimately, come away with an assist from Mo. Mo couldn't really miss that, could he? About a yard out. And, and that's ultimately what a, a wing back or a winger is all about, putting it on a plate. Yeah, because um, before that, we went into the second half, I was speaking to Mo because I knew I was going to get I was gonna get myself into opportunities to cross the ball. I spoke to Flynn as well, saying that I'm just going to play high, so just play it in the space and I'm going to be running. I'm not even going to look if you've touched it properly or because that's what it comes down to, how he's touches. But I had faith in him. So I was gambling already, so he just played in the space. I got there and I put in balls. Because the first two, I cut it back and obviously he was unlucky. Mm. Then I, Mo spoke to me, he said, a cross goal, this one. So that's why I went closer into the box this time. And I, I waited for him, I see him running and I just put it in there and yeah. he was there. Sometimes wingers and wing backs can overcomplicate things when, when you get into positions. Because all you're really thinking about is your final ball. But ultimately, if you put it into an area, it's on them, really, isn't it? It's, it's on the strikers to get there. Yeah, but obviously, because we're playing with um, not the bigger strikers, mm -hmm. you have to be a bit more cute and stuff like that. So, like, in training, I've been trying to practice my crossing, like, every day, every stuff like that, just so when I do get in that situation, I'm better with it and more crosses lead to goals. So. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been trying to improve on. Yeah, the manager said you've, you've working your socks off in terms of that kind of element of your game, the sort of final ball, the final delivery. you staying out late and, and getting it done. And, and, and I guess that's what you've got to do to improve. Yeah, it's what you've got to do to improve yourself. It's what you've got to do to get in the team and maybe push someone out of the team that's doing well. You've just got to improve yourself. Mm. It's been an interesting period actually because obviously the first team have been struggling a little bit in terms of results and those that are not in the side are obviously banging on the door and, and those games like Tuesday are a great example of if you perform you, you get an opportunity to show what you can do in the first team in, in league games. Yes, because um, I've been coming on the last couple of games, like 70th minute, but obviously it's hard to come on when you've been sat on the bench and stuff so trying to make an impact. So when I got the opportunity to start on Tuesday I just thought to myself like I'm just going to go out there and do my game and like, do it from the start and be relentless. Mm. It's been an interesting season for, for everybody really, but for you more than any, and Bobby to be fair, sort of in a situation at the start of the season through no fault of your own and, and obviously through no fault of Dems, but because you're living with Dems at the time, you had to self-isolate so you missed the first two weeks of the season and that, that must have been so frustrating having done so much work in pre-season. Yeah, it was, it was very frustrating because I thought like, pre-season I did my, I was trying my hardest, I was working, doing extra stuff. Then for that to happen, you lose a bit of momentum. And like it's football, other people take the opportunity, and they cement themselves. So it's even harder to knock them off. But like it's football, so you mm. just got. To, it was upsetting, but you just got to get on with it, and you got to build again. So that's what I've been trying to do the last couple of weeks and months. Yeah, you're sort of climbing a mountain from a from a lower end compared yeah. to everybody else, and you know that's why people probably judge you for the second half of the season rather than the first half of the season. Yeah, literally. literally. But it's, as I said, it's football and you just got to keep on working hard because opportunities come sometimes when you least suspect it. So. Mm. Have you found these under-21 under games, under-23 games, the, the regular nature of them a real help to you? Because, you know, I know the manager's been trying to trying to arrange these games to keep fitness is, is high because everyone's going to be needed this season. But from a personal point of view, from a mental point of view, those games, are they really important for you to to, to know that you've been watched and, and, and you have that opportunity? Yeah, like when the 23 games come on and you haven't played in a while, it's like... It's, it's, it's very good because like, some people can look at it and think, oh, it's the 23 games, like, I'm not going to do my, I'm not going to try, I'm going to sack it off and stuff like that. But that helps no one, it doesn't help yourself because when you do get thrown in, you're not going to be ready. So when the 23 game comes in, I've played exactly the same way I'll play if I was in the first team. Mm. I try to be relentless, I try, I try to practice stuff as much as I can in them games, but I do it properly. Because mm. when you get opportunities like Tuesday or if it's the first team, you can replicate. I think the thing is as well with these 23, the, often the teams you're playing have got 23 sides, haven't they? They might be playing, you might be playing a higher league side, but they're together. So they, they can be actually more challenging games sometimes than having a spattering of a first team fixture uh, players in. 
Yeah, yeah. Some of them games, because they've, they've worked with each other, they've got their set pattern of plays. But I feel like, obviously, because we're one of the younger dads, we've got our own, like, obviously, I'm not saying we play completely different from mm. the senior players here, but because we all around a similar age, like, everyone's confident around each other, that like, I know when Flynn touches it with his right foot on the right side, he's going to do it. Or I know when now gets the ball, if I come short, he's going to play it straight to Sir, and I'm mm. already there on the overlap and I've got open a space to run into or to drive into. Part two of our interview with Idris Kanu will be coming up a little bit later on in the show. We also delve into the archives to find some classic matches against today's opponents, Rochdale. We head back to the year 1998 with a 2-0 victory and a 3-1 victory over our opponents. They include a first senior goal for youth team graduate Chris Cleaver. Now, we look back at Tuesday night's win over West Ham United, a 3-0 success here at the Western Home Stadium. Two goals from Moisa, one from Serhat Tazdemir, and that set up a third round tie against Portsmouth here at the Western Home Stadium.
Welcome back to the pre-match show in association with Mick George. Now today's opponents Rochdale have been pretty good to Posh in recent years. Posh have won the last three, including a 6-0 win thanks to an Ivan Tony hat-trick last season. We delve back a little bit further now though to 1998 where David Farrell scored a stunning solo goal. Under than usual, Ryan Hansel getting the chance to lead the team out. A team almost unrecognisable from last week. Barry Fry made six changes. David Farrell put Peterborough ahead, his first goal of the season, and superbly taken. Giuliano Grazioli added a second of the second attempt just before half time. It finished Peterborough 2, Rochdale 0. After the veteran striker scored twice in this 3 1 win over Rochdale. To add to that, Quinn's free kick gave Chris Cleaver the opportunity to open the scoring midway through the first half. It was the 18 year old's second goal for the club. Rochdale pulled a goal back five minutes later through Andy Farrell, but Posh were determined to bounce back from their disappointing FA Cup exit in midweek, and that was where Jimmy Quinn took over. He's 20 years Cleaver's senior, but his eye for goal is as sharp as ever. He scored Peterborough's second just before half time. He added a third in the second half with a quarter of an hour of the match remaining. A simple finish following more good work from Cleaver and Martin Carruthers. He wasn't far away from his hat-trick late on, disappointed with the finish, but was satisfied with the 3-1 win. All efforts now are directed towards the second division. The most important thing this season is to, to get uh, Peterborough promote, promoted. Uh, obviously, the cup run would have been nice, and going to United would have been nice for both the, the players and the fans. But being realistic, we were never going to win the FA Cup. And, uh, you know, it makes it all the more important that we do well in the league. It was a game we had to win and it didn't matter how we played, we just had to win the game. Hello and welcome back to the pre-match show in association with Mick George. Now, earlier on in the show, you saw part one of our interview with Idris Kanu, where he talked about arriving at the football club, playing in numerous positions and being, of course, the longest serving player at the football club. It's time for part two of our interview now, and many of you may not know, but Idris actually suffered a career-threatening injury at the back end of last season following a training ground accident. He talks very openly about that injury in part two, which is coming right now. Well, Idris, believe it or not, you're the longest serving Peter United player, which sounds a very weird statement to make given your age, but obviously says a lot about how players move on these days. Does it feel weird to you, that statement? Uh, it kind of does, because I remember when walking through the door and like, all the players that were with me at the time, and like they're all gone. I still keep in contact with most of them, but I just remember it. Like talking to Leo, talking to Lewis Freestone, like we're all still best of friends. So it's like it's just weird talking about it now, like can, that. Can, can you remember your, your first day? I mean, I remember obviously interviewing you. I mean, it, you obviously. Yeah, um... I, I remember my first day training. I, um, no, my first day, I remember I was, there was a pre season game, and I went to go watch at the stadium against some Wolves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Nuno, uh, he was the manager at the time. So I remember watching that. I remember training, I think it was a Friday because um, all the shot didn't want me to come in earlier because none of the papers. Mm. But I come in on a Friday, it was game Saturday. I remember everything, like, it was, it's gone so quick. It has, it's ridiculous how time can fly because obviously you've actually gone through a couple of managers during, during that time as well. And I, I guess it's, it's quite hard as a young player to, if, if you don't make an impact straight away in terms of the first game, you have to sometimes bide your time and be patient. Is patience something that comes naturally to you? Because, I, I mean, as I say, you obviously want um, to play football. I've got a very good upbringing. Like my mum, my dad, they speak to me all the time. They know not everything's always rosy. Like sometimes stuff aren't always given to you and you've got to earn it. So I feel like that's what I've had to do. I feel like um, when I first come here, I thought that the chances were there. But we're in the, in the, when you're young and you're in a, a winning side, it's sometimes that's even harder to break in. Hmm. So, yeah, so and you had to adapt as well position-wise because I, I know you played a lot, of, a lot of your football as a striker or as an out-and-out -out winger. Now you sort of adapt into a wing-back role as well. You played in the number 10 very well yeah. as well. Everyone says as a young player it's nice to have different positions to your bow, but I suppose you, you want to sort of nail down one position. Yeah, um, I like playing centrally if that's 10 or striker, mm. but I like playing winger as well because I feel like I've got, very, like, I've got good attributes to play as an mm. out-and-out wing or, or right wing-back. I was speaking to one of, um, like I'll say, my older brothers. That like he's a, he's my friend, mm. so my friend's older brother, and he was telling me like, right wing backs are dire now, like, because football's changing, it's evolving, mm. and like, now people are looking for set wing backs that are, that can defend and they can attack very mm. well. So I, I thought about it, and I was like, yeah, that's very good. Yeah. Like, 
I mean, it's weird because I remember that Portsmouth game. You played um, as a sort of number ten, and you know, that was last year or the year before last, and you were thriving in that role. And, and everyone was thinking, "Wow, this is this could be the you know the start of a really good period for you." Did you enjoy that? And you yeah, able to contribute because it was crazy. Because the game before that on, against Ipswich, I played wing back the whole game, and mm. I, I thrived as well. Then obviously I went to um, number ten against Portsmouth. I did well. I did very well. But in, even in the second half, I went back to wing back and I did well as well. So I was thinking, like, I didn't really think about position wise, I just thought I'm playing good football. And that's the main thing, that as a footballer, I'm, I'm growing up. So that's what I was happy about during that period. Mm. And of course, it was all going so well. And then obviously, an incident that, that could have ended up costing you your career about a year to the day now. And, and I mean, for those that don't know, I mean, it was a really hairy period for you. Yeah, um, in training, I got um, fractures my, my eye socket. So I was like, it could have been much worse. When it happened, I was just hoping like I've just got a like swollen eye or a concussion or something like that. But it wasn't a concussion, which the doctor said would have been worse if I had a concussion, because you, ne you never know how bad a concussion mm. could be. But if uh, when I found out it was a eye socket, I was devastated because like that's time out. I couldn't see for like weeks on end. So it was a tough period for me. How did you get through that time? Um, Going through that time, uh, my mum literally went, was about to go on holiday like a couple of days like after the incident. So she went home. So my missus looked after me. I had family members looking after me at the time. And yeah, that's all I could do really. People don't realise in football that injuries obviously affect you as a player if you get injured, but they obviously affect those that are close to you as well because ultimately they're the ones that are going to be sort of running around looking after you. And sometimes people don't take that for granted a little bit, but as you say, Without them during that period, particularly with an injury like yours, you were lost. As, I, yeah, was... because I, had, I remember I couldn't I couldn't drive for a while. I remember I still remember the first day I could drive because my car has been stuck here for a while. Hmm. I was like, I think I'm going to drive home today. I'm feeling good, so I got in the car, uh, drove back to the house, which is like three minutes away hmm. from here. I was, I was happy because I could drive again. Hmm. Buzzing about. I suppose that's the independent side of things, isn't it? You get something taken away from you you're just used to doing. Yeah. It, it can be really hard to, to, to live without it. Oh, it was very hard because I couldn't do anything. I, to, I remember I haven't taken cab, I, I, wasn't, I haven't taken train in a long time. And I was doing all of them stuff, which I wasn't used to. Hmm. And, and just finally on, on that, in, in terms of when you come back, w with that first day of training, I, I guess you're really nervous. Aren't you just trying to try and get back in again? Oh, yeah, I was nervous because I didn't want a thing to be like if I was to fall over so people would laugh and be like, ah, oh, he's still feeling his eyes, just little stuff like that. So I wanted to just get through it. I felt confident, but it, sometimes it takes a while to to um, build up the confidence because it did. Also, I remember playing against Fleetwood the first game, a uh, common striker, I felt good. I mm. thought this was all going to be rosy and stuff like that. The next game I come on against... Um, um, Burton as a right wing back, and I felt weird because I haven't played there for mm. that. And you need, you know, you need, you need lots of fitness to play there, and I felt bad. But it just takes a while. So the whole preseason, like, I felt like I built the confidence. And now I don't even worry about my eye. My eye feels perfect. And just it's just one of the things you just need to build it up. And like some people don't always understand that they feel like when you have an injury, you, can, you just have to come back straight away perfect. But it's not like that. Hello and welcome back to the final part of the pre-match show in association with Mick George. Now of course today we could have up to 2,000 supporters for our league fixture with Rochdale. If you're not one of those lucky ones to be sampling live football for a while, then why not buy a match pass via iFollow. £10 match passes are available, just head to the club website which is www.theposh.com. Thank you for watching today's show. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any feedback, please do email jake at theposh.com. Anything you'd like to see in the show, um, we're happy to listen to all of your comments. Thanks for watching. And if you are here today and watching on your phone, get behind the boys and enjoy the game.